we have indeed behind the thickets of Aguari lies the beautiful spotted coat of Mvula and he's just settled right on the precipice of this drainage line and well we are kind of right on the edge and I'm keeping my foot on the brake just because I'm a little bit nervous of where we are. It's not ideal as I will show you just now but look at his tatty ears that we were talking about earlier. You can see those ears are telling the stories of a male that has gone through plenty in his life and those are all war stories from his times that he's fought with other males where he's run through thickets and can you imagine what those ears have seen in the 12 and a half or almost 13 years of Mvula being alive it really is an interesting animal to look at and it's amazing how each one of those will be representative of a story you can see lots of flies around the ears which is fairly typical you will see that a lot around leopards and lions a lot of the biting flies gather there and especially with him because of the amount of damage that those ears have taken there's been ticks that have been on them there's probably little bits of exposed flesh and that's where the flies are going and having a look you can actually see they go into those little v's and places where it is not very pleasant for a fly to be but he's just lounging now right on the banks and from here he has a beautiful view so in front of us the drainage line drops away completely and then it goes over onto the other side so where you see here that is probably a I would say what do you think Seb 20 meter drop maybe a 20 meter drop straight down there's this pretty much a vertical bank that we are on the edge of so I've got my foot on the brake in case it does give way slightly that we can reverse quickly but it's looks as though we're not too close to the edge so we should be okay and like I say if he goes any further there's not really going to be too much we can do but look at those massive front paws that he's got huge and nice slow breathing rate so he's not in any way too full he's not hot as yet and but you can see that he's not exactly empty either so he must have got a meal since we last saw him because the last time we saw him he was a little bit on the skinnier side after that Shungile story where he took Shungile's kill he wasn't looking as full and healthy as he is now and there's a little white tip to the tail but his coat is beautiful there's one thing about Mvula that I've always sort of liked is he's got a quite a gold color on his back you see there he's got a very golden coat and Tumba reminds me a bit of that as well Tumba's also got very gold color and isn't that beautiful you can see why leopard print became so popular because there's lots of colors and stark contrasts between the two So Misha, you're asking what the average lifespan is of a leopard. Well, it varies between male and female. So males, because they spend a lot of their time being territorially dominant, they've got to fight for their territory. They've got to make sure that they keep other males at bay and they really have to kind of work hard to be the dominant male. It means that they have a situation where, unfortunately, they end up fighting a lot and their lifespan is shorter. So you'll find that male leopards, generally within this section of the world, will live anywhere between 12 and 14 years is a good sort of age for a male leopard that's why Mvula is on the older side of that he's you know approaching 13 now which means that he's eventually going to become an old boy but for now still doing good and I actually was looking at his teeth the other day his teeth look fantastic for his age they're still quite long and sharp so he's not like his teeth have worn down he's just got to be careful of other male leopards and so far he seems to be quite a clever lad and has managed to avoid all these other males that have been around so he's avoided Tingana and Anderson and Quarantine and Kunyuma and Shivambalana he's kind of kept them all at bay and he just kind of moves around in between them so he's done really well on the female side of things you'll find that females can live anywhere between sort of 16 and 18 is a good age for a female but sometimes they'll even go as far as 20 but that's very rare and unfortunately sometimes you'll get them dying a little bit earlier around sort of 13 14 15 which is what we've seen with some of the other leopards in this area so it's quite variable but generally they're sort of mid to late teens is a good way to put it for leopards so that's normally how long they go for but I think this is where he's decided is going to be the day the rest for the day I don't think he's going to move too much from here he's got such a beautiful spot and the shade here is really nice he's got a little bit of a breeze blowing so even if that Sun gets up and starts moving around you're gonna find that there's going to be nice shade from all these tumberties you can see it's the perfect place for a leopard to spend time and why leopards are so difficult to find you will never spot this leopard from any road in particular you'll never be able to even 
following in a vehicle, it would have been tough to have found him without actually following him himself inside here. And his camouflage works so well. We're right on top of him. We're probably now about three, four meters from where he is. But if you have a situation where you are about 100 meters away or 50 meters away, you will not see this cat at all. So perfect place for a leopard to spend time. There'll be varying prey animals that might move through here. Nyala, kudu, bushbuck impalas that will all walk along these drainage lines during the day and so he does have an opportunity to strike if a prey animal does come and then later tonight drainage sections like this are really good places for things like porcupines you also find warthogs will go back to their burrows that might be on the fringes of this drainage line so it's a great place for him to spend the day and wait it out and I'm pretty sure that the girls this afternoon might be able to find him. I don't think he's going to go too far from where he is now, given that he's just gone absolutely flat. The only way he would move is if something bumps into him. So either something like elephants chase him or he sees a food item that he wants to hunt. But otherwise, I think he might be down for the day, and that's exactly where he's going to stay. Hopefully he does stay, Seb. It would be nice. You'll have to bring one of the girls here because you're going to have to guide them in. It's not easy to get here. So, Michael, you're asking when did Mvula first show up in this part of the Sabi Sands? So, he first, I think, was seen, I'm just trying to remember now, it must have been 2010, I think, beginning of 2010, somewhere there, beginning to mid-2010, I think, is when he first was seen um, coming up into this northern section. I'm not so much sure about Juma. He used to be seen a lot more down to the south. So Hoffman's Little Gauri, um, Vessels, Chitwa, Annettes, um, Inkoro, Cheetah Plains. That's where he used to be a lot more than what he is now. Now he spends more of his time up here in the north. Um, but I think it was yeah late 2009, early 2010 was be my sort of estimate around that area if I remember correctly. Because when I got here, he was a dominant male, but not if he was pushing a Mufufanyan at that stage. He hadn't quite asserted himself yet. He'd only been in the area for the past few months, and so it must have been, yeah, 2010 must be when he arrived. So he's been here for quite a while, and it's a long time to be in an area if you think about it. He's been, you know, six years, seven years in this section. And so that's most of his life. If you think that he's only just over 12 now, he's going to be have spent more time up here than he did anywhere else in the world so been a long stint that he's put in and doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon he's looking in fantastic condition there's no sort of signs of his aging other than his ears and a few sort of almost what looks like worn spots with faded spots on his neck area the rest of him looks absolutely perfect Maritza, you're saying with Mvula being an older leopard, would he mate if he got the chance? Well, most definitely. The thing with him is that he has actually mated last year. He mated with Shaluva, and he took his chance when he got it. And if Tingana is not paying attention and a female came into heat within this area and there was no sign of Tingana, he most definitely will take the opportunity to mate. Being a male leopard, even though he's not territorially dominant at the moment and he's not scent marking and vocalizing, that doesn't mean that if he doesn't come across a female, he won't try and mate with her. He most definitely would. The thing is, though, and why Tingana probably is not spending much time up here, is that there really isn't too many female leopards in this northern part of Juma and into Biffle's Hook. I was talking to the Biffle's Hook landowners the other day, and they were telling me that they're not seeing any female leopards in Biffle's Hook at the moment. There's one shy one right on the Kruger boundary, but that's way east of even Tingana's territory. And so there's probably not too many females around, and that's why Tingana's not too worried about this area at this stage. If a female did come into this area, I'm pretty sure Tingana would be hot on his heels and maybe then push Mvula away from this section. But for now, if a female did rock up and there was no sign of Tingana, most definitely Mvula would take his chance and try and get a little bit of action with the female. Now I'm trying to get rid of a whole bunch of branches that are stuck up my jersey, so if you hear some rustling, I do apologize because they are irritating slightly. This is what happens when you follow dogs and leopards in the mornings as you get covered in all kinds of things particularly the dogs because you tend to race through thickets and you end up getting leaves and branches all over the car and it's a bit of a pity because well we washed the cars yesterday so it's not ideal that they're getting all dirty again all Taylor and my hard work has been 
destroyed in one morning, basically. Now, I'm going to sit here for a little bit longer because, well, in the presence of a legend is always very nice to sit and enjoy. But I believe there is something that Byron has got that Mvula also targets from time to time, and I've seen him eat quite a few around the Chitwa Dam area.